Ladies and gentlemen, EcoFlow has done it again. The River 3 is more than just an upgrade, it's a glimpse into the future of portable power. From its sleek design to its significant improvements in efficiency, this new model is packed with surprises. In full disclosure, EcoFlow sent me this power station for a test and review. They don't have any control over what I say, they just wanted to know my honest thoughts and opinions about it. After a first review of the specs, you'll see that the battery on the River 3 is slightly smaller than that from the River 2, coming in at 245 watt hours. However, with EcoFlow's new design this year, using the gallium nitride architecture, you will get just about the same amount of power when running the AC inverter than you did on the River 2. You see, by using gallium nitride in the River 3 series, the efficiency of all the electronics has been improved by about 30%, while also reducing the power station's weight by about 20%. The River 2 used about 12 watts per hour to keep the AC inverter running, where the River 3 is only consuming around 5 watts. That's a savings of about 7 watts per hour, and over the 5 hours of the AC inverter rundown test, that'll save us about 35 watts. So for the everyday user, that gives you a smaller, lighter battery that returns the same if not more power in real world uses. Another major benefit of the GAN technology is that this power station is quieter than my whispers. With a claim noise level of just under 30 decibels, this power station will not interrupt or distract anything. In fact, while topping this power station off with just about 320 watts from the wall, the fans never kicked on once. And during that time, the River 3 never felt hot. This is just a quick reminder to give this video a like so you don't forget to do it at the end and help electrify this channel's charge. Inside the box, you get, of course, the power station, a manual which no one's going to read, you get the wall charging cable, and finally the car charging cable. The River 3 measures in at just under 4.5 inches tall, 10 inches wide, and 8.5 inches deep. EcoFlow also significantly improved the design of the power station by ensuring that the handle is in line with the shape of the body. So this power station takes up a little bit smaller of a footprint and the space that it consumes is much more efficient than the previous model. The River 3 has one 126 watt 12 volt DC outlet, two USB-A outlets, as well as one 100 watt USB-C. And finally, the AC inverter has two jacks rated at a combined total of 300 watts continuous or 600 watts max. Over on the side, you can put about 100 watts into this XT60 input from direct current, such as a car or a solar panel. It does have a maximum of 110 watts for a solar panel, and the car charging capability is around 100 watts. But on the AC input side, you can put in up to 320 watts, and as I said before, this thing is very quiet at its maximum recharge capability. The AC inverter also has a feature called X-Boost mode, where it can run loads that appear to be up to 600 watts. However, what will happen is, currently we have a voltage with zero load of about 120 volts, and as I turn on my egg cooker, I'm gonna get a load of about 300 watts, which is its maximum rating. While it's bumping up to that 300 watts, you'll see that the voltage on the meter has dropped to about 110 volts. You'll see with X-Boost mode that with these high power draw devices, the power station will lower the voltage to fool the device into thinking it's getting the power that it needs. So if you're cooking water or boiling something, or you need to run some kind of mini heater, the device will power that device up to about 600 watts, but it won't run necessarily as intended. If you're boiling water, this is probably okay, but if you're using some kind of precision equipment, it may not be the best answer. The display shows input wattage, output wattage, percent battery remaining, as well as the time remaining until full discharge or recharge. There are some other excellent touch points such as this little icon indicating that the fan is on, although I can barely hear it. We're running at 60 hertz, which is in the US system, and the Wi-Fi is connected. Now that the power station is at 100% state of charge, I do want to show you that I am in pass-through mode. The River 3 has uninterruptible power supply mode, and currently we're running directly from the power off the wall. This is a maximum capability of 300 watts. I also want to point out that the display on my power gauge here is very close to the display on the power station, 
pulling 54 watts from the display here and we're showing 53 watts on the power station. Now we're gonna do a battery capacity rundown test at about 54 watts. That's as close as I can get to that 0.2 C or 0.2 capacity, the 245 watt hour battery inside of the River 3. To begin the test, I'm gonna disconnect the power on the side and reset this gauge at the same time. I'm gonna go over to kilowatt hours. We'll check back in a few seconds to see how much power we get out of the River 3. Let's see what we got from the battery capacity rundown test. 213 so 213 watt hours out of the rated 245 watt hours from the ecoflow river 3 is an impressive 86 percent if i remember correctly the ecoflow river 2 returned about 80 percent so we got almost a six percent increase over so we got almost a six percent increase over the previous model let's take it outside and see how much of that 100 watt solar recharge capability we can put into the power station i've been waiting for the perfect solar conditions to maximize the input on the river three and currently i've had overcast skies for several days and unfortunately soon here i am going to have to publish this video so as much as possible i've over paneled the River 3 to see what kind of input I can get. Even with a 200 watt solar panel array, I am only currently bringing in about seven watts. And that is essentially seven watts of ambient noise. There's no direct sunlight right now. Did try to put an 800 watt solar panel array with the theory that the more I over panel the power station, the more ambient solar energy I can put into the power station. But unfortunately, my larger solar panels have a higher voltage open circuit than what the River 3 can accept. The EgoFlow River 3 has a maximum input of 30 volts and most of my larger 200 or 400 watt solar panels are above that. Most of them have a 35 to 43 volt rating. And so I did have to use two 100 watt solar panels in parallel and in this case i'm putting in about 200 watts of solar power but because the sun is not out i'm not able to achieve much more than about eight watts at a time so i'm going to leave this array out here in this overcast condition in the hopes that the sun will peak out and when the sun does peak out i'll try to get a glimpse of the maximum solar input and even right now the sun is just a little brighter behind the clouds so i'm currently pulling in 15 watts in the meantime let's go ahead and test the car charge capability now normally for power stations I don't truly like to use the car charging capability and the main reason for that is getting limited to about 100 watts for most applications does not allow a sufficient recharge time and so for this one we're bumping straight up to that 100 watts which is more than enough to charge this thing in just under three hours and normally i do not like to use the 12 volt outlets to recharge power stations however this one is small enough that it recharges in a sufficient amount of time that it's not a nuisance if this thing had like a one kilowatt hour battery it could take 10 to 15 hours of driving to recharge it but since this is a 245 watt hour internal battery that 100 watts of input will charge this thing in just under three hours with every decrease in cloud cover i am getting just a little more power and i have to be very careful to make sure i don't overload that maximum eight amp input into the river three because each of these two little solar panels can put out a maximum of between six and seven amps and i don't want to overload that eight amp capability something i really need to make clear with what i'm doing here is I do risk damaging the River 3 by over paneling this, especially if the sun does happen to come out all the way. So I do not recommend that you over panel your solar panels at all. I'm gonna call that a win for the solar panel capability because I've had this time lapse going where several times over the last half hour, I have seen that 110 watt max achieved when the sun comes out every time the sun comes out obviously i hit that limit and then as the shade comes back out i lose that again in addition to that i did pull out my screen and got a little bit of a screen recording from the ecoflow app 
which I have covered in several other videos, so I'm not gonna get into today. One thing I have to say about the EcoFlow app in general is I believe it is the best interface for a power station of any of the major power station brands. The app simply connects well and it has a very good user interface where you can turn on the AC input or in this case the DC input. Those two things you can turn on and off and it will function very quickly. So if connectivity is important to you then EcoFlow is definitely the winner. And it's almost impossible to get a good reading from this decibel meter because this power station is literally quieter than the ambient air in my studio so i can't even really breathe without going over the sound of the river three the fan did just kick on i've had this thing plugged in for a few minutes so let me give it one more try to see how loud it is with the fan on so unless i have something like a soundproof room I'm not gonna be able to make this area quieter than the River 3. I've been trying to burn down the battery on my MacBook Pro, which can pull up to about 140 watts from this USB-C cable. And the reason I'm doing that is I wanted to see, can I get the 100 watts out of this USB-C output on the River 3? Another thing I wanna point out as I'm plugging in the USB-C from the River 3 is that the USB-C does not appear to be attached to either the AC outlet or the DC outlet. And what I mean by that is there is no power button to turn on the USB jacks. That's okay in my opinion, but let's give this thing a few seconds. I know Apple really likes to protect batteries, so it's not gonna bang right up to that 100 watts. Let's give it a few seconds to see if it will get up to 100 watts, and if not, how close it gets. Something important that most power stations do that this one does is something called pass-through charging. I am currently putting in 320 watts from the wall while I'm taking about 80 watts out of that USB-C output. So I've tried just about everything that I can to get this USB-C over or up to 100 watts. I've opened all kinds of apps on the computer here. I'm getting 93 watts out of this USB-C output. Is it possible that the MacBook is only pulling 93 watts? I think so, and I'm gonna chalk this up to a win for that USB-C output. So overall, I believe that EcoFlow has done an excellent job of upgrading their power stations over the last several years, from the River 1 having that older NMC battery chemistry to the River 2 upgrading to LFP, and now the River 3 using that GAN technology. Each one of those upgrades are significant. If you are in the market and the River 3 is a little too much for you, the River 2 is still an excellent option with that LFP battery. And now with the River 3 with GAN Prime, you're gonna get a smaller footprint as well as a much more efficient output of that power. Make sure you check out the links in the video description to get the latest discount code and current pricing and specifications for this power station. And then watch this video because the new Delta 3 Series is coming out and I'll put that review right here.